Welcome to the Microgreens Mastery Podcast. I'm your host, Jonah Krokmalnik. Together, we'll explore the art of turning tiny seeds into a thriving microgreens empire, sharing insights, coveted secrets, and strategic wisdom from building one of Canada's largest microgreens farms. Stay tuned for thought-provoking conversations with leading figures in the world of microgreens. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. My name is Jonah, and I founded one of Canada's largest microgreens farms, growing over a quarter million trays of microgreens in my farming career. And I'm on a mission to help growers and farmers like you grow more food with less resources and make your farms lean profit machines. On today's episode, we're going to be focusing on the decision-making process of expanding a microgreens business. Over the last year of running the podcast, I've honestly been quite surprised at how many farms I've interviewed have recently expanded their farm or are in the process of expanding their farm. I'd love to share my own wisdom on this process as it could be a lot to consider both financially and time-wise when expanding a farm. This episode is going to be focused on the best questions to ask yourself to determine if you are planning to expand your microgreens farm in the coming months or years. And I'm super excited to share this episode with you all, so let's get right into it. So the first question that is super helpful to ask yourself is what is the cost benefit analysis of expanding the business? So not every you know situation you're going to be in is going to be beneficial to expand the business. If you have, for example, a lot of debt, uh, it may not be the best timing to expand the business. So you really have to take a full analysis of where you're at, uh, what time you have to commit to the business, um, and then do like a, a full breakdown of what are the costs and what are the benefits. And this might sound so basic and so simple, but if you just make a list of what are all the the negatives or cost of of uh, expanding the business and what are all the benefits of expanding the business and then you can kind of uh, weigh them out and see which would you know what what things are more important to you what things are less important to you so for example when I expanded my farm for the first time in 2015 going from uh, you know my parents house to a full commercial facility um, I had to decide you know how much time am I able to commit to the farm and at that time in my life I was able to commit pretty much a hundred percent of my resources and time to the farm because that's really what I wanted to do. There was nothing else I wanted to do other than grow microgreens. And at that time I was growing lettuce and, and basil as well. Just grow really high quality food and be able to feed uh, people and do that as a career. And some people might, this might be a part-time thing. So if it's, you know, something that you don't necessarily want to dive in full-time, then that might be um, one of the, one of the negatives is that like, I don't have, you know, 40, 50, 60 hours a week to commit to running this business. So it's really, really powerful to, to do this. Um, it may sound very rudimentary and very like, you know, basic. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, I could just do that in my head, but physically writing them down, uh, surprisingly can make a really big difference. So I do this all the time with uh, cost benefit analysis of different decisions I need to make in my life and in, um, in my business, especially. So um, you know, when I decided to expand the business and go from one warehouse to more than double uh, the square footage, there was obviously a huge financial cost to that. You know, I, at the time, it was probably, uh, I don't know, $150,000, dollars just for the capital cost to expand the business, plus the operating cost of having more staff and all, all, all these costs. It could be very overwhelming. So um, to put them all down on paper and see, okay, yes, I can make x amount more money but it's going to cost me this much it'll pay for itself back in let's say a year and a half two years six months it gives you a lot more information to work with to get an idea of what the actual cost benefit analysis of this decision is um and this ties into the second question that i highly recommend people ask themselves which is have i accurately projected the financial outcomes including the worst case scenario the average or most likely scenario and best case scenarios. So you really want to, again, break down what are the potentials of, of this expansion. So if you know for a fact it's going to cost you $100,000 to expand uh, into a warehouse and get everything you need, um, you know, then assuming, you know, you have very little increased sales, are you still profitable? Can Like how much cash flow do you have? So it's important to assess not just like the financials and how much money I'm going to make, but what's the cash flow situation going to look like? Because, for example, if you expand the business and you have a projected profit of uh, increased profit of, let's say, $100,000, but it's going to cost you $100,000 in cash flow, um, 
up front, then all of a sudden you may not be in a situation where you have enough cash to pay your bills. So it's important to understand the financial implication of different outcomes. Um, so now obviously you want to move as much as possible to the best case scenario, which is have the most amount of sales, have the least cost of you know the expansion, including uh, HVAC and lighting and racks and seeds and hiring employees and any sort of retrofit you need for the, you know, you, you, whether it's your house or your, your space you're expanding into a commercial space. Do so you want to understand what all the potentials of um, the different scenarios are? And you're most likely not going to end up in the worst case scenario and most likely not going to end up in the best case scenario. But it's always good to know, okay, if I do end up in the worst case scenario, will I be able to survive uh, this expansion? And, and it's, it could be a very difficult financial period of time going through an expansion because you're putting out so much capital or money to expand the business without any guarantee of how much more sales you're going to have. So what, what I always recommend people do is in that worst case scenario, let's say you're only able to increase sales by 10 or 20% from your current level. Does your current business offer enough uh, uh, you know, backstop or security that you're going to be able to still survive and not go bankrupt or, or not have a uh, negative cash flow for a, a long period of time. So it's okay to have negative cash flow for two, three, four, five months, as long as you have a, uh, a, a an amount of cash or you have a loan ready to go that will allow you to get through that period. So one simple tip that I can recommend is for anyone that is going through an expansion, um, before you go through that process, Make sure you have some sort of line of credit or loan secured, meaning that it's ready to go. You just like click a button or you you call your your bank representative and and you have cash in your bank account within a short period of time. Um, and the reason this is helpful is in, in my own experience, it's very, very common for the cost you project to go over and for your expected revenue in the short term to be lower than you 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 know than you than you you dream it to be. So as long as you have that backstop, you can keep operating the business. But if you don't have that backstop and you can't get cash uh, injected in the business through a loan, line of credit, or you know even family or friends, or you know if if, if uh, that's the route you want to take, uh, you can get to a position where you all of a sudden have this great business that's doing really well, expanding, but you can't pay your bills. Which I've seen this happen personally with my own customers that I had to uh, you know wait months to get paid because they expanded so fast that they couldn't keep uh cash flow liquid enough to be able to pay their bills which as you know someone in an expansion period that can put yourself in a situation where um you can't pay your own bills because your customers aren't paying you so it's really important to again look at the worst case scenario which is maybe a combination of revenue is is not as high as you'd like it to be costs end up being higher than you want them to be and some of your customers maybe aren't paying just so you know what the absolute worst case scenario is uh, your average case scenario, which is kind of what you would ideally plan for, and then your best case scenario, meaning like if you can expand the business and get it to full capacity or close to full capacity, what does that look like financially? Just so you know what the potential of this expansion is, which again, kind of ties in the first question of the cost benefit analysis. So these two really tie, tie together pretty well. So when you do that cost benefit analysis, including these different scenarios of worst, average, and best, um, will allow you to, to have an accurate picture of what is potentially possible with financial outcomes, um, which will just allow you to have a full range of information to make your decisions. So the more information you have, uh, the better decisions you can make. Um, as an example, if you know, okay, this is the worst case scenario, I'm all of a sudden going to have, uh, I'm going to run out of cash after three months, then you know in advance to plan, okay, just to be safe for this worst case scenario, I'm going to have a line of credit ready to go. You don't have to take out the line of credit and use it. Um, and, you know, it's just available to you. So those are the type of uh, things I would consider from the financial side. Introducing the Little Green Seeding Machine. This tool can help you seed your microgreens up to 300 trays per hour. With all this extra free time you'll have, you can spend it growing the business with sales and production, or you can spend more time with family and friends and less time on the farm. The Little Green Sea Machine works with all of the most common microgreens varieties, including pea, sunflower, radish, brassicas, mustards, amaranth, basil, and so many more. 
This tool seeds much more evenly than hand seeding, reducing disease risk while also increasing the uniformity of your crops, and do it twice as fast. Pre-order your Little Green Seed Machine today and join the MicroGreens revolution. So the next question I think is really helpful to ask yourself in this expansion process is, are the potential future sales secured? Do you have any security that you're going to actually be able to sell to these customers? So generally speaking, during the process of expanding the business, ideally before you expand the business, you're going to procure some sales. So you're going to try to get more sales and you're, and you're going to try to get new customers. Um, and this can look many different ways. It can be expanding in your current market. So if you currently sell the chefs, you can just go to more chefs at more restaurants and gauge interest in, in them and have like a list of like, you know, what their potential orders would be. Um, and, and you get this information directly from them. So, you know, a customer uh, is interested if they, uh, you know, keep calling you and want product from you. That's when you know, like you're going to get a sale. If you call them up and they're like, uh, yeah, maybe like in a few months we'll be ready. I would just put those off as like, for now, no's because you don't want to uh, uh, be planning your financial forecasts based on like maybes. Um, so I made this mistake early on where like I had uh, distributors be like, oh yeah, we'll buy like 500 clamshells of microgreens at like $15 a piece. And it's like, whoa, like all of a sudden you have this like incredible opportunity. Um, but as it got closer and closer, it became more iffy and iffy. And as that, you know, happens, it gives you a signal that like, okay, maybe they're not as interested as they uh, made it seem to be. So you can, again, go to your current market. You can expand into a new market. So if you're selling to chefs, you can go uh, potentially to distributors or to retail uh, or direct to consumer. I, you know, generally speaking, direct to consumers where you start, not where you move to. But um, as an example, like you could uh, create a system for direct to consumer, but generally retail, food service, um, even within your food service segment, you can, if you're selling to chefs that are restaurants in a particular area, you can expand your area or you can expand to like hotels, golf courses, um, uh, convention centers, uh, sporting arenas, like wh whatever it may be, you can expand outwards. Um, and, and, and that's really helpful in engaging what's, what's possible. Um, and then you want to have those uh, numbers that are secured. So the ones that you that you are confident um, that will purchase from you have a list of, of those. And those are the ones obviously you'd want to contact first when you have space. But there's going to be a period of time um, where, you, where you, you're kind of planning to expand, but you don't have full security in, um, in what the sales are going to be. So the better you can uh, go through that process and have a system to mark down which customers are going to, you know, most likely buy from you, how much they're going to buy. It can give you an idea of like, you know, going back to the first two questions, what are the outcomes that are possible? So um, the ones that are, you know, calling you and be like, hey, we want product tomorrow. Uh, those ones you can almost guarantee they're going to buy from you. The ones that are on the fence, it, 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 they're on the fence. So you don't really know. So there's a bit of a gamble there. And then the ones that aren't responding to you, ignore your emails, um, you know, giving you the, the work around, I would just put those as like a for sure no. Doesn't mean you can't sell them in the future. Timing is really important uh, in selling microgreens. So I've had customers that like the timing didn't work out. And then, you know, a year later, two years later, uh, they may call you or you may call them and be like, oh yeah, now's a good time. Let's work together. So it doesn't mean that you won't get those sales. It's just, you want to know for the, uh, you know, the next three to six months after expansion, um, what what your projected sales are going to be and then going out to the future the more these sales calls you do the more you're known in the industry and when the time comes that maybe their current microgreen supplier um you know w went belly up or they're not happy with the quality or a customer that doesn't use microgreens all of a sudden wants to use microgreens you're the first person in their head because you reached out to them you have a great product and uh and you know they, they in this scenario they may want to buy from you now the next question that I think is really great to ask, um, and I think this one's really important, is do I have a thorough plan in place to manage the expansion and my current production? So in my experience, uh, a lot of farms don't necessarily realize that when you go through an expansion, you're also running your current business as is, while on top of that, expanding your business. So running a business in steady state is, I don't want to say easy, but relative to 
uh, expanding a business uh, is, is, is a lot easier. So uh, when you're in expansion mode and you're already running an exist existing business, uh, you're doing everything you normally do, plus you're planning for the expansion, you're actually expanding, you're going out getting sales, potentially training employees, um, creating SOPs. There's like a lot go going on at once and it can very easily go uh, get to a situation where it can be very overwhelming and you're working like 80 hours a week just to keep up. So it's really important to have a plan in place beforehand so that you don't end up in the situation that I've been in and other farms have been in. And this is where something like consulting could really make a big difference in having a plan in place allows you to plan in advance. So you're not like working 80 hours a week. You've already done the work ahead of time before you actually expand. And when you actually do expand, everything's ready to go. It's super smooth sailing. And it's just like business as is like there's no, uh, you know, significant extra work or time commitment because you've done all the hard work up front before it went crazy, busy with the expansion, getting everything physically built. Uh, getting new customers, you do it in a strategic way so that it's much more manageable. Um, so this could look like, as an example, I had a, a great podcast with uh, Garrett from Peabot Microgreens. Um, we had chat before he went to the expansion and I kind of mentioned him like, hey, it would make uh, sense to start hiring people before you get your warehouse facility and move into a, a, a larger facility because you're going to be uh, working on the construction, you're going to be trying to get new sales, you're going to be trying to hire and train staff, which that in and of itself, hiring and training staff is a huge, huge time commitment because you have to do what you normally do. Plus, you have to take extra time to train the staff, uh, create the documents and everything needed to make sure everything runs smoothly, uh, manage uh, payroll. Um, even just the hiring process alone can be a time consuming uh, process, especially as, as the first time you're ever doing it. So you got to create a job posting. You got to, you know, get a sense of the person. You need to potentially bring them in for a day to test them out, do all the forms you need to hire them as an employee. Like it's, it's a process. So if you could do that in advance, by the time you expand, not only do you have uh, that process done, you now all have an employee that's trained and ready to go to help you out during the expansion. So something as simple as that uh, may be something that you may have not have thought of. And it's really helpful to have those type of plans in place so that when you do expand, it's as smooth as possible and you can focus on the things that are going to give you the highest return on investment. They're generally going to be sales, implementing uh, auto, uh, automation like the little green seeding machine, uh, the tray washing machines, the soil mixing machines, uh, the harvesters, things like that. that are really going to have a high uh, ROI is really what you want to spend your time on. So sales is always, always number one. Uh, because sales is what drives the business. So the more time you can create in your business to spend on sales, the better uh, things will look in the long run, assuming everything else is taken care of, which is where the planning process uh, becomes really important. The next question that is really important to ask yourself is, am I going to continue operating the expanded business in the same way I currently operate or make changes to the business to achieve economies of scale? So generally speaking, as you expand a business, it becomes more and more important to achieve economies of scale. And economies of scale pretty much means, for those that don't know, is if it costs you right now, let's say $3 to produce a clamshell microgreens, as you scale the business, you want those numbers to, that, that cost to decrease. So if it costs you $3 now, ideally you'd want it to cost $250, $240, whatever. As long as it's moving in the right direction as you scale, then you're getting economies of scale and allows you to um, one, have a, a better profitability and or uh, enter new markets that your price point didn't allow you to enter before. So uh, as you get into distributors, they're generally going to want uh, a product at a lower price, which means you are going to make less per clamshell. But you can achieve uh, really high volume um, through that process. So as you have economies of scale, you can still make good money by having the volume plus having a lower cost per unit uh, sold. So that's a really important uh, part of, of you know, expanding the business. And economies of scale happen through uh, you know, efficiency is pretty much the, the, the main way that happens. So uh, automation to save on labor costs, improving yields and, and crop quality um, on, on the production side. And the combination of those two uh, will allow you to um, have a lower cost. And I should also mention on the cost side, like if you normally buy one case of clamshells at a time or one bag of seed, and now all of a sudden you could buy 10 or 20, uh, you should be able to get a better price on that too. So all your inputs 
or most of your inputs should uh, scale down. It's not going to be linear. Like it's not going to be, okay, if you buy 10 times as much, it's going to be 10 times cheaper, but you may save a few percentage here and there. And it really adds up because if you're spending $200,000 on seeds and soil and uh, uh, you know, all your operating costs, electricity, all that kind of stuff, if you get it down, like, you know, a few percent, that could be a significant amount of money that's in your pocket. Um, so the combination of those is how you get economies of scale. So like I mentioned earlier, the automation is really important. Um, labor is the number one cost for farms. So if you can reduce your labor costs um, while also getting the other benefits of automation, like consistency and making it easier for to, to uh, have staff work on the farm and um, and have higher yields, like they, they all work in synergy to to create that economies of scale. Uh, but automation is a really important part of that, um, which as many know, even before like, you know, building the low green sea machine, I've been talking about automation for a long time in my consulting and uh, and just in the conversation I've had with farmers, including the podcast. So it is the one of the most important things um, in making a farm viable. Like if you just think about it, if you went to a, a supermarket and you picked up a uh, cucumber or tomatoes or lettuce or whatever, like all of those farms have significantly high automation for a reason, because it's the way to stay competitive, keep costs low and still make a good living as a farmer. So, uh, you know, microgreens is still a new industry. Uh, as it expands and gets bigger, those that don't automate will be left behind and be, and not be able to make a profitable business. It, it's the same as any other industry, like everything that's made uses automation now. And if your business is not using that, it, 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 it's literally a matter of time before you will be uh, uh, unable to compete with the larger growers or even the newer growers that are using these low cost automation tools. So um, yeah, it, it, it's an inevitable process of the way our system works. And for something like farming, it's even more important because labor is such a big part of the business. So do you want to keep uh, operating the expanded business the same way? Meaning if you're doing everything yourself, do you want to keep doing everything yourself? Will you have time to do everything yourself? Which goes back to some of the questions and like, what's the plan to expand the business? Um, like, are you going to hire people? And if so, how much time is that going to take up initially of your time? Um, and how much time is it going to save you in the long run? Automation, are you going to change uh, and start automating processes in your business to get that economies of scale? Or are you going to continue operating the same way that you do now? Or maybe it's a, a middle ground, maybe depending if you're if you're doing, let's say, a, a small 20% expansion, maybe you don't need um, to like go all in on uh, on hiring staff or, or automating every part of the process. Maybe you just want to do key parts of the processes that will have the highest ROI. So something to consider there. And the last question that I highly recommend you ask yourself, uh, which is kind of counterintuitive to the other questions, which are all about expanding, getting a larger space, hiring employees. This one uh, could be beneficial to some people, which is, can I reconfigure my sales or production to stay in my current production space longer? And another way to ask this, is there a way to reconfigure my production so that I can keep being the sole proprietor of the business and not need to hire people? So these two questions are important because not everyone wants to expand to a large scale facility, and that's totally fine. Um, if you are, if you do want to stay in your current facility, how can you maximize revenue and sales uh, in that space? So, for example, let's say you're growing like red vein sorrel, chives, uh, like seeds that are are a lot slower to grow and take up a lot more space. In theory, if you can go out and get sales for something like pea shoots. You all of a sudden go from a crop like red vein soil, which takes a month to grow, to pea shoots, which take a week to grow. So you get 4x the amount of production, plus pea shoots are, generally speaking, much more profitable. You get pretty high yields, so you can sell more product out of that same space. So this is something that's really important if you're not able to expand, if you don't have the capital to expand, or you simply don't want to expand the business for pretty much any reason. This is a way you could reconfigure your production and sales so that you can stay in the facility longer. And what's really nice about this is that there's almost no additional cost to this method of expansion or reconfiguring your business. Um, because if you just grow a different crop and you don't need more lights, you don't need more racks, you don't need to go rent out a space, you don't need uh, more equipment, then it's just pure profit. So um, that's what I always recommend generally first, unless you have a big opportunity to expand. So maximize your current space, 
Once it's maximized, then move into a new facility. And on the other side of this, if you can reconfigure uh, your production so that uh, you can produce more, but not have not not spend more time doing it, um, that will allow you to avoid the process of hiring people uh, through again automation. So uh, if you if you can utilize tools, whether it's software, uh, seeding equipment, soil mixing, tray washing, etc., all all the tasks that are involved uh, in in growing the product. Um, if you can spend the money on that, then you may not need to hire people for a longer period of time, which is what I did at the beginning of my business. Like I bought as much equipment as I could, knowing that hiring, retaining, managing people um, has a lot more variability. So when you buy a piece of equipment, it can't it can't quit. It can't it, it can break down, but it's much less likely it's gonna like it can't call in sick. Uh, it can't um, uh, you know. Uh, perform less optimally. Uh, it, it, it can't, you know, go stay out late and get drunk and, and come in the next day tired. Like equipment is reliable. It comes in every day in and out and will provide you with uh, what you expect it to do, which is increase the efficiency and speed in growing your product, um, growing your migraines. So yes, equipment can break down, but in my experience, like it's pretty rare that it does break down. Um, and there's many things you can do uh, to maintain machinery so that it doesn't break down. So um, simple things like lubricating uh, bearings in, you know, a soil mixing machine can keep it uh, lasting a long time. Um, changing the belts, if there's any belts on equipment you're using, like th these things will keep them going for a very long time. So um, that's, that's part of the reason that I think automation is so powerful is that like, it's it's the most reliable form of uh, efficiency uh, because there's there's no there's there's pretty much no risk um, in, in in having things go wrong other than potential of equipment breaking down, which in my experience is quite rare. Um, so I hope these questions help you guys um, in the process of deciding to expand your business and allow you to see things from a different perspective and allow you to uh, make that decision with more ease and more confidence in deciding on when to want to expand, how you want to expand. Uh, and I really hope this helps you in your process. It's been amazing to see how many farms are expanding um, and uh, and how big the migraines industry is growing over this last year and the last you know 10 years that I've been growing migraines. So it's been an amazing journey. And I really want to thank you for joining me on this journey. And uh, yeah, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in to the Microgreens Mastery Podcast. To access a wealth of insights, just click the subscribe button, stay notified about each new episode, and enjoy all of this wisdom for free. If you're ready to supercharge your Microgreens business, visit microgreensconsulting.com for a gold mine of guides and resources. We've transformed thousands of Microgreens businesses, and you're invited to join the success story. Let's stay connected. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok at Microgreens Consulting for exclusive content and expert tips and wisdom. If you found this episode insightful, please leave us a review, spread the word, and let's share Microgreens magic with the world. Until next time, let curiosity fuel your growth and may happiness be your harvest. Happy growing, everyone.